there are two classes of levers that you can use to balance a fly. The first one, a class one lever, is like a teeter-totter. And it was used to design the balance leech that was popularized by Rowley. What you have is a fulcrum, shown here as a gray triangle, that's the pivot point. And you have two loads on either side that considering leverage and buoyancy, and buoyancy is important because we are measuring, we want it to be balanced underwater, those two loads balance across the pivot point. And then you get a level floating fly. A class two lever is like a wheelbarrow, and that's how the Eurostreamer is balanced. What you have is a fulcrum shown here as a gray triangle that is the eye of the hook suspended down from the tippet. All the weight, all the load is on that fulcrum in a wheelbarrow type example. To balance it, you have to apply some sort of lift or upward force at the rear of the hook shank. And this, since we're underwater, that's done by adding buoyancy in the form of a foam tag. The buoyancy balances the load at the fulcrum and you get a level floating fly. Before we get to the tank testing, I want to show you what I call tippet testing. And this is where, while I'm actively tying the fly, I've added the bead and I've added the lead and the wraps, and then I've uh, tied it off with a half hitch and threaded on a piece of tippet. And here you see that this is a test to show how the fly will lie when we finish dressing it if we have an added foam. So this is the U. Uh, 555 Tiemco hook that I use in the next three slides at number 12. Um, and I've used this as the uh, weighting uh, basis for all the flies used in the tank testing. So this fly is tied with um, O and O wraps across the entire hook shank and it has a 3.5 millimeter tungsten bead along with a, a medium polar chenille black body. As you can see that once we work the bubbles off that this fly more or less floats near vertical. And we're going to show this in the next uh, film clip with some backer foam on it. So this is the same fly that we just saw in the previous uh, shot with a little bit of the closed cell foam backer on it. You can see that this, floats, this fly floats relatively level even, and it's able to dive well and has good jigging action. So I tied up a fresh version of the fly you just saw with the 3.5 millimeter the, the uh, wraps of the O1 OLED across the hook shank. This is a U555 jig hook, size 12. And I've got the medium polar UV uh, chenille and a marabou tail with the backer rod flotation. So we can see the bubbles coming off. You can see that we're floating pretty well. And that the back, back of the rod's pretty obscure back there. Also, the fly dives well. Comes back to float. So here's a tip of test of a super ball jig on the bare hook. You can see that this is virtually horizontal floating. Um, this is a size number two hook and a 1 8 inch lead head. And what we find is, is that if we went ahead and dressed this fly and put it in the tank, which I'll show you later, it would also float horizontally as long as you don't allow, add a lot of weight in terms of wire, tinsels, or lead on the shank. 
So here I dressed that uh, super jig head and you can see that with using the Euro streamer type dressing that this hook uh, is still gonna float, this fly is still gonna float horizontally. Um, and this is without any foam added. This is just the weight of the dressing materials alone is not enough to drag this hook down into a vertical uh, float. This one would drift along horizontally. So here's that uh, super jig hook dressed with the Euro streamer type dressing. And, you, and once we work the bi bubbles out, you can see that the tippet test was correct, that this fly is going to float horizontally without adding foam. Here are the results of a, a DuckDuckGo search for the quarter inch closed cell foam backer rod just to show you what it looks like. This is available virtually at any hardware store and it comes in a variety of colors from white to uh, light and dark gray like you see here in a, very, a wide range of diameters. It's used for caulking. I normally use quarter inch or three eighths inch diameter foam backer. And to prepare it for tying, I cut off a two inch piece and using long blade sharp scissors, I uh, cut that piece in half. And then if needed, that's not the size I want, I'll cut it in half again and then a half again if, to get the size that I want down for two very small flies. You're looking at my tank testing equipment, which consists of a, a GoPro camera with a macro lens on it and I'm facing a, a wide-waisted hourglass-shaped vase that sits on a piece of white plastic. And wrapped around this is a paper towels that give me both a white background to contrast the fly with, as well as cutting glare. Sometimes I'll even wrap it clear around the camera to try and cut the glare.